This is a Scarra robot I've been designing for a few months. In this video, I'll test its precision, load capacity, reliability, and do a few other demonstrations. Along the way, I'll explain how I designed and built it. I designed this robot to be able to handle at least a 200 gram load. The maximum weight a SCAR robot can handle depends on the rigidity of the arm, and the maximum acceleration of that payload is determined by the torque of the joint actuators. Inside the first two arm segments are 16 to 1 timing belt reductions. A 16 to 1 reduction means the motor has to rotate 16 times for the output shaft to rotate once. This gives the motors an increase in torque in exchange for some speed. From testing, I know these actuators are able to produce over 3.6 newton meters of torque. Here's one of the arm segments being assembled. The biggest challenge designing these actuators was tensioning the timing belts, which is really important to keep the belts from slipping or having backlash. The first reduction stage can just be tensioned with sliding motor bolts, but the second stage is a little more difficult. I ended up using an idler bearing on a pivoting arm which can be adjusted from the outside. This idler also increases the wrap angle on the second stage pulley, which helps increase the frictional force that keeps the belt from slipping. The last arm segment uses a smaller stepper motor and a 5 to 1 reduction to rotate the end effector. Again, the belt wrap angle is increased using some idler pulleys. I set up a dial indicator to measure the repeatability of the arm, and it's repeatable to within one thousandth of an inch, or about one quarter the thickness of a sheet of paper. Repeatability is important since this type of robot is often used for pick and place applications, where the robot needs to return to the exact same position every time. I decided to use V-rollers running in a 20 by 40 aluminum extrusion for the Z-axis, which is bolted directly to the steel C-channel. The goal of this is to make it as rigid of a foundation as possible for the rest of the arm. The Z-axis post is fabricated from steel C-channel and plate according to the CAD model. After cutting the plate and drilling the holes, I welded it together. And here it is after a coat of paint. I used a counterweight inside the steel C-channel with the same weight as the arm. This balances the arm in any position, so that the Z-axis motor only needs to provide torque to accelerate the arm. Otherwise, the motor would constantly be working to keep the arm from falling. Because of the counterweight, the Z-axis actuator only needs a 5 to 1 timing belt reduction. This robot uses what's known as open loop control. Just like a 3D printer, the robot can keep track of how far each motor has moved, but it doesn't know where it starts from. I'm using limit switches and a homing sequence to find the starting position. 
Once each limit switch is pressed, the arm knows where it is and can keep track of its position by knowing how many steps it is away from the home position. Here's the code I wrote for the homing sequence. It moves each stepper motor one step at a time until all the limit switches are pressed. To test the reliability of the robot, I set it to run in a loop shuffling blocks on a ramp. I left it running for around 8 hours and it worked well. The gripper is powered by a servo, and I have another video that goes into more detail if you're interested. And here it is playing the shortest possible game of chess. The code for simple movements uses the Axel Stepper library. This library sometimes doesn't work very smoothly when accelerating multiple stepper motors at once, which is why I had the motors running one at a time in some of the tests. The electronics I used are an Arduino with a CNC shield on top, four stepper motor drivers, and a 5 volt regulator to power the servo. These are the inverse kinematic equations for a SCARA robot. These let you find the required angles of the joints so that the end of the robot moves to a given x-y coordinate. The software I'm using calculates the inverse kinematics in Python and sends the results over serial communication to the Arduino. The Python GUI lets you either control the robot in real time or record movements to play back. I didn't write the Python or the serial communication code. I used some statics to find the minimum safe height for the roller plate, as well as how many wheels are required. The farther apart the wheels are from the center of the plate, where the moment acts, the less force the wheels will experience. However, at the same time, the taller the plate is, the more the z-travel is restricted. I settled on the spacing of 110 millimeters, which results in a force of around 6 pounds being applied to each wheel. Here are some of the prototype parts from along the way. One thing I would probably change for the next version is to increase the diameter of the actuator output shafts from 8mm to 10 or 12mm. I think this would help a little with rigidity, and it would also decrease the load on the output pulley where it interfaces with the D-shaft. If you want to build this robot yourself, all the CAD and code will be published on my GitHub page.